Hey guys, Scare9 here. Welcome back to my channel today. And in this video, we're going over some very, very, very huge information that Bungie just let us know about in this week's This Week at Bungie regarding things like the exotic balance pass coming in two weeks, as well as huge changes to the power progression system coming with the launch of the Warmind DLC. Now, a lot of this stuff is absolutely game changing. Destiny 2 will no longer be oriented towards casual audiences. If you really want to succeed in Destiny 2, it looks like you're going to have to be a pretty hardcore player. So let's go ahead and start off with the stuff that I'm very excited about, which is going to be some of the changes to the exotic weapons coming within this update. Now we did get a lot of gameplay. It's going to be playing in the background. I'll have the links to the actual YouTube videos in the description below. All of this footage is from Bungie. They did it themselves. So any credit of that goes to them, but it's actually really helpful to have some idea of what these descriptions actually mean, which is pretty cool. So the first one we all know about the Graviton Lance. It is going to be a two round burst weapon. The explosion when you kill an enemy is much larger and whenever you kill an enemy with that explosion, the smaller Axion darts will spawn around like projectiles and kind of track down and kill other enemies. Now this thing looks extremely powerful, however it is important to keep in mind that this is a test environment and this is a patrol zone. So it might be pretty good in lower level environments like this patrol area, however we haven't really seen how it stacks up in things like Crucible. Are these Axion darts going to do a significant amount of damage? Can you hurt yourself with them? What is the base time to kill with this weapon? There's a lot of variables that we're not really sure about. So while it looks really powerful and I'm extremely excited for it, just keep that in mind if it seems overly powerful. Now the next one is going to be the Skyburner's Oath. Now this thing had a huge change. So it got explosive rounds added into its base firing mode. So no matter what you were doing with it, it will have explosive rounds. However, the two firing modes were changed. Now the first one is still the same. Whenever you aim down the sight, it shoots slower, you're more accurate, it hits hard. That's still the same. However, the second mode, which is whenever you are firing from the hip, actually got a huge change, which is really cool. Whenever you are firing this weapon from the hip, it fires slower projectiles that are not not only slower, they actually track their targets as well and explode on impact. So essentially you kind of have like a mini exploding grenade launcher. As you can see in the gameplay, they seem to be quite powerful as well. Once again, this is in a test environment. How good is this going to be in Crucible? The Skyburner's Oath is actually still very competitive in this meta right now. I know a lot of people don't use it. It feels a little bit weird, but on paper, this weapon is extremely competitive actually. So I'm very interested to see how these changes affect that. I think if anything, the addition of explosive rounds is actually going to make it even better in Crucible because of the lack of range fall off, which is something I'm very interested in testing out myself. Now, the final one is going to be the Rat King, and this took me by surprise. This thing has been made extremely powerful. I want you guys to keep in mind the enemies that they are killing in the background are raid level enemies that take around three to four rockets to kill normally. These Rat Kings are taking them down in seconds. So the changes that they made is now that the perk triggers immediately whenever fire team members have the weapon equipped. So right now, you need to actually be using the Rat King. It needs to be pulled out. You need to have it in your hands. However, if it's in your kinetic slot, your teammates will still get the benefit, even if you are currently using your elemental or your heavy weapon. Now, they also made it fully auto to really demonstrate the increased fire rate that you get, which is pretty cool. And the invisibility that you get after a kill actually lasts seven seconds now, instead of like the three to four that it used to last. Now, he also teased that the Masterwork variants puts a, quote, tasty garnish on this meal that you don't want to miss out on. I'm not really sure what this means. We know that Masterworks for weapons, of course, grant you orbs on double kills. I was currently under the assumption that Masterwork exotics were going to do the exact same thing. However, based on this quote, it seems like it doesn't. To me, this almost seems like it teases kind of minor exotic perks whenever you do have the Masterwork variants of the weapons, which is something I am extremely excited for, but I couldn't really spot anything in the gameplay. I'm not sure. Maybe it gives it a larger mag. That really helps it out, but I honestly have no idea. So leave me your best guesses down in the comment section below. So those are all of the changes to the exotics that we got to see in this week at Bungie. Next, we are going to be covering the huge changes to the power progression system. Like I said, coming with the warm mind. Maximum light will now be 380. If you have all mods equipped, it is going to be 385. However, they are making it extremely difficult to hit. I'm thinking back on the level of like taking King or maybe even that of like House of Wolves or Curtis End. They said, once you hit 340 light, you will really have to rely on weekly loot sources to make progression 
heading towards 380. They said they really want to cap your progress. The highest end activities are going to give you the most progression towards your end goal of 380. In addition, they said that they actually made it very difficult to hit 380. Once you hit 370, there's a huge fall off. They said that ideally it will take you as much time to get from 340 to 370 light as it does to get from 370 to 380 light. So that means I expect a pretty long grind ahead of us in this new DLC. And they said that ideally, if you do not participate in end of week activities, things like raids, trials of the nine, stuff like that, it will take you until the next expansion launches to hit maximum light, which is crazy. Now, I love this change. As a player who runs raids on a weekly basis, as a person who loves playing things like trials and other end game activities, I think that they should really impact your progression. A player who only does solo things, running public events, maybe doing the nightfall with guided games, stuff like that, should not be able to hit maximum light level with the same amount of ease as I do. That just seems a little bit off to me, so I'm very excited that they're making these changes. In addition, they're making it so that exotic quests don't boost your light quite as much. The same thing goes for clan weekly engrams. Essentially, you're really, really just going to have to work very hard to hit maximum light. So that is everything that we're going to cover in this video. Let me know what you guys are most excited for down in that comment section below. Do you like the changes? Do you hate them? Are you a casual player and you don't want to see it get harder to hit maximum light? Or are you a super hardcore player and you were excited about these changes? Let me know all your details down in the comment section below. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like rating and to share it with your friends. If you were interested in watching either of the two videos on screen, you can click their respective invitations to be taken to them. If you are brand new to my channel, make sure to hit the giant version of my logo on screen to be subscribed for more awesome Destiny 2 videos and live streams. Thank you guys so much for watching today, and I'll see you in my next video.